I recently attended the International Aeronautics Congress, where some of the coolest players in the space industry show off their latest rockets and hardware. Attending big name industry presentations such as SpaceX and government agencies such as Roscosmos, NASA and JAXA gave a great deal of insight into where we are headed in the next decade. It seems that the old guard and rocketry is being outpaced by a new generation of futuristic rocket makers looking to innovate with ambitious goals in mind. Are we entering into a new age of rocketry? Who are the biggest players and what are their goals? One of the most dramatic shifts set to occur in the next decade is private companies having a much more prominent role in space. SpaceX and Blue Origin are aiming to take humans further out into space, while Rocket Lab, Virgin Orbit and several other companies are also looking to accelerate the ballooning small satellites industry. How are these private companies becoming capable of competing with the already established titans such as the United Launch Alliance? One of the reasons for this is due to the incredible reduction in costs being brought on by the reusable rocket industry. This innovation appears to be a new development, but the reality is that it has been the goal for much longer than what most people realize. Rocket Lab was founded in 2006, only just coming to the public's attention this year. SpaceX was founded in 2002, and Blue Origin was founded even earlier in the year 2000. These reductions in launch costs are going to accelerate three major industries, the small satellite industry, space tourism, and the ability to transport infrastructure into space and onto other planets. Three visionary companies in particular all have these different goals in mind. Rocket Lab is aiming to provide small satellites with a cheaper launch platform. Currently, nanosatellites are hitching rides on larger rockets due to the absence of dedicated rockets for this industry. The Electron rocket is Rocket Lab's answer to this gap. First launched on May of this year, it is set to start launching small satellites towards the end of 2017. And by 2018, it may launch a small satellite to the moon. The benefit of focusing on this market is that with payloads less than 250 kilograms, the launches are cheap and the number of launches possible each year could reach up to 100. Two other companies looking to enter into the small satellite industry worth keeping an eye on are Virgin Orbit and Vector Space. Virgin Orbit is a part of the Virgin Group, owned by Richard Branson. It is building a launcher called Launcher One, which is planning its first launch in 2018. Interestingly, the intention is to launch it from a Boeing 747 called the Cosmic Girl. Looking at the larger scale of rocketry, the most well-known name trailblazing new tech into orbit is SpaceX. Their plan is well known at this stage, to reach the grand goal of Mars. Not only does their goal seem achievable, their PR is also exceptional. When I attended their presentation at the International Aeronautics Congress, it was by far the most popular presentation at the event. The world's most powerful rocket will debut this year. The Falcon Heavy will undergo the first static fire test, which is basically firing the engine while the rocket is strapped to the ground, this year in December. Capable of delivering up to 63 tons to orbit, it will be able to carry two times more than the next most powerful operational rocket in the world, the Delta IV Heavy. However, several other companies are also developing competitors to the Falcon Heavy. Currently in development is Blue Origin's powerful rocket, New Glenn. This rocket will come in two forms, a two-stage variant capable of carrying up to 45 tons into orbit and a monster three-stage variant that while not yet confirmed, may be more powerful than the Falcon Heavy. The New Glenn will also be reusable, launching and landing either on land or on a drone ship. The heavy lift industry is just the beginning for these two companies, however. SpaceX recently announced the BFR, the Big Falcon rocket, an update to the gargantuan ITS announced last year. This rocket is designed with the intention of delivering 100 people to Mars within the most optimistic time frame of 2024. The incredible aspect of this rocket is that it is planned to be fully reusable. The difference with the BFR and the Falcon family of rockets in regards to reusability is that the Falcon 9 is only partially reusable, with the first stage capable of landing and fairing recovery coming much closer to being reusable. The BFR, on the other hand, will have close to every component being reusable, and SpaceX has claimed that it could end up being one of the cheapest rockets to launch ever. If it becomes as cheap as promised with 150 tons to orbit in reusable mode, it could even outperform rockets designed to launch small satellites into orbit. Blue Origin has alluded to an even larger rocket called the New Armstrong, but the details on this mysterious rocket are still vague. So far, it has only been mentioned once, but the name alludes to Blue Origin setting its sights to the moon, while SpaceX focuses on Mars. Blue Origin is also looking into space tourism, with their other smaller rocket, New Shepard, planning to launch humans into space as early as next year. It was the first rocket to have launched and landed, and then doing so four more times, 
and experimental launches and landings. The New Shepard promises to take humans to the edge of space at just over 100 kilometers. Reusability is the key, with this smaller rocket to driving down the price. Within the next few years, a new era of rockets will be upon us, with several private companies launching reusable, super heavy lift rockets into space. What rockets are you most looking forward to seeing launch? Leave a comment below and thanks for watching.